This is a video showing the difference between an angle drive with an 8 to 9 gear ratio and an angle drive with a 1 to 1 gear ratio. Um, this is a reproduction of the angle drives that would have come with the car. It has the exact same um, housing as a Smith's angle drive. Um, has the same gears inside as a Smith's angle drive. And it behaves just like the angle drives that came with the car. So this angle drive here is virtually indistinguishable from an original unit. This angle drive here is what the vendors are now selling. Um, and this is not a reproduction angle drive. I, I keep seeing people call this a replica or a reproduction. And nothing could be further from the truth. Okay? This is a replica or a reproduction. And you can look and see the difference between the two of them. Um, this is a Jaguar MG Triumph, etc. angle drive that has been modified to work on a DeLorean. But it does not look like a DeLorean angle drive and it does not act like a DeLorean angle drive. Uh, what Ed Uding is doing is he's getting these aftermarket Jaguar drives. He's cutting the end off the housing right there, extracting the spur gear. He's removing the little stubby cable. Um, as built, these drives have a little stubby cable that's designed to mount to the transmission. Uh, these drives do not mount to the spindle and are not driven by the wheel in those other applications. They're driven by the transmission. So he extracts the spur gear, he removes the uh, little stubby cable that's permanently attached to the gear, crimps some um, crimps to hold the square end on a new uh, spindle cable, and then he also machines this new end. You can see that the metal here is all shiny, whereas this is not. These are two separate metal pieces that are joined together by that roll pin. And he has to machine a piece that emulates the measurements of the original drive to accept the spindle nut. As built, these aftermarket drives would not take a spindle nut. It wouldn't even fit. So he needs to do two things. He has to be able to extract the gear, and you can't take it out of the back of the housing. Uh, this one you can, this one you can't. So he cuts the end off and takes the gear out of the front. If you were to open this one up, you take the gear out of the back. And uh, you can see that this drive is much wider than this drive. Uh, these drives sit much closer to the suspension spring, about three-eighths of an inch closer. And some owners have actually reported the suspension spring impacting the rear of the unit and breaking it off. The original drive, you've got three-eighths of an inch additional clearance to the back of the unit that you don't have on this. But uh, I wanted to show you the behavior of the lower speedometer cable. This is where the lower speedometer cable attaches. This is the spindle cable that goes through the spindle to the wheel. And what I've done is I've used the Sharpie to um, darken the face on one face of the lower speedometer cable and I've put a line 
on the spindle cable so we can count the revolutions. Now watch what happens when I turn this spindle cable one revolution. One revolution of the spindle cable, there's our line, gives you 11 to 12 percent more revolution of the lower speedometer cable. This drive is designed to spin the lower speedometer cable faster than the spindle cable. Now watch what happens when I do the same thing on the Ed Uting drive. And I need to put the caveat in here. You can see there's a fair amount of slop on the lower speedometer cable. I'm holding the spindle cable still and you can see the slop on the lower speedometer cable. But I'm going to turn the Uting drive one complete revolution and there's that slop. And you'll see unlike the original drive where the black face is now pointing this way on the Uting drive it's back where it started. The lower speedometer cable spins at the same speed as the spindle cable. Do another revolution. There's our mark back where it started. And now the black face is pointing this way. Watch the Uting drive. And there's that slop. There's our line. And our black face is back where it started. There's three revolutions. And our black face is pointing this way. There's that slop back where it started. To get this drive back to where it started I have to do eight revolutions. There's seven revolutions. There's our black face almost back where it started. And there's eight revolutions. And there's our black face back where it started. This cable has to go around, this drive's spindle cable has to go around eight times to move this guy nine times. The reason that your speedometer spins about 11 to 12 percent low is because this drive is spinning the lower speedometer cable at the exact same speed as the spindle cable. And the speedometer is not designed for that. It's designed to have this cable spinning 12% um, faster. 9 revolutions for every 8 revolutions of that cable. But as you can see, there's that slop. This spins at the exact same rate of speed. That slop is terrible. I wonder if that's why people report their speedometer needles bouncing all over the place with these drives. I suspect so. So that is the difference between an original angle drive and what the vendors are now currently selling. This is not a reproduction. This is not a replica. This is. This is not. This is a drive that is intended for another application that has been modified to work in our application, albeit imperfectly, and this may also have some quality control issues. I have no idea where these things are made. I suspect they're made in Asia somewhere. Um, and so it would not surprise me whatsoever if this has some build quality issues. This was made in the United States. So this has got uh, better build quality, I would suspect, than what the vendors are currently selling.